What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel, Rivas Talk Sports. I am back again for my weekly NFL spread picks. I know the past few weeks I've been doing my top five. I'm going to do my spread picks for every single game for week seven. So without further ado, let's hop into the video. So the first game that I will be talking about is a game that we are going across the pond to in London, New England Patriots versus the Jacksonville Jaguars. Both teams are one and five, very uninspiring teams in 2024. The Jaguars did lose to Chicago Bears in pretty much their home field stadium in London. Meanwhile, the Patriots, they lose to the Houston Texans. This Patriots offense looks a bit more explosive with Drake May at quarterback than it did with Jacoby Brissett. If you look at the past few games with Jacoby Brissett, they were struggling to score some points. I like the upside that Drake May brings to this team. He's kind of like the little brother version of Josh Allen. He can sling the ball, make plays with his legs. So I do like the upside here. And also with the Jacksonville Jaguars, this team is not looking good. Um, but with the spread, I like the plus six of the Patriots. I like it to be close. Um, I know the spread is 50-50 between um, both parties, whether let's say if you have your 20 best bettors, I could see 10 people choosing the Jaguars minus six, 10 people choosing Patriots plus six. So I think it's more of a 50-50 spread. Don't feel comfortable laying minus six with the, with the Jaguars. So give me the Patriots plus six. Keep it closed. Upside with Drake May to shred his leaky Jaguars defense. Can they upset the Jaguars? Of course, but I like it to keep it close. I like Drake May with the potential backdoor. Keep things interesting. Patriots plus six. Giants versus the Philadelphia Eagles. The New York Giants lose on primetime against the Cincinnati Bengals. And the Philadelphia Eagles came back from their bye and beat the Browns by a small margin. I don't think Nick Sirianni is a good, co good coach. I don't think he is the right coach to elevate this team. Since last year to that loss to the 49ers, this Eagles chemistry has not looked well. And the Giants side of things, they did lo they're they losing their left tackle, Andrew Thomas, potentially potentially for the whole season. Tibble is not playing. And Daniel Jones has not scored a passing touchdown in MetLife Stadium in almost two years. I do like Daniel Jones' capability to find his way through this Philadelphia Eagles defense. I can see neighbors making big plays, moving the field for this Giants offense, but I just like the more talented team here for the Philadelphia Eagles. Saquon Barkley revenge game. I know that Saquon's not going to want to lose at MetLife, especially from what he did in free agency, going from the Giants to the Philadelphia Eagles, but I like the Eagles minus three. I think they could beat the Giants probably by around four or more points, but I, I like to be comfortably choosing this Eagles minus three at MetLife. The Giants have yet to win a game at home, and the home differential isn't the best for the Giants right now. Give me the Eagles minus three with the spread. Detroit Lions versus the Minnesota Vikings. The Lions embarrassed the Dallas Cowboys at at and Stadium. Granted, the Cowboys did lose a lot of starters that did not play in that game, and the Minnesota Vikings are coming off their bye. The Minnesota Vikings have been the talk of the story for the whole entire season. Solid offense, solid defense. Meanwhile, the Lions lose Aiden Hutchinson, which is a big blow for the pass rush defense. The Lions have one of the top run games in the NFL, one of the best offensive lines in the NFL. Um, I do think this will be a very close game, very close to visual matchup. Um, right now where the spread is, it's at minus one and a half. It looks like during during the earlier of the week, it was at plus three, and a lot of people are just hammering the plus three, the plus two and a half, the plus two. So it's going down and down and down. So it looks like there is a lot of people going on the side of the Lions, but I like I can't find a way to go against the Vikings just yet. Undefeated season, well rested, coming off the bye, and I know the Lions are coming in with a raw raw kind of situation with Hutchinson being hurt for the season and want to get this W. But I like the Vikings at home. I think Brian Flores' defense can find a way to stop this Lions offense, make Jared Goff a bit uncomfortable in the pocket. So I like the Vikings at minus one and a half. Anything over one and a half, maybe like two two and a half, probably Lions. But I like the Vikings at minus one and a half. So give me the Vikings minus one and a half spread. Next, we have the Miami Dolphins versus the Indianapolis Colts. The Dolphins are coming off their bye. Meanwhile, the Colts did defeat the Titans. Anthony Richardson may be playing this game. I don't like Anthony Richardson at this moment as a quarterback. I think Joe Flacco helps elevate this Colts offense and could probably help him push for a playoff push. Um, meanwhile, the Dolphins are still with are still without Tua. The offense has been really stagnant. Tyreek Hill has been frustrated. So I definitely 
don't have much faith on the Dolphins side of things just yet. But I like the potential upset here. I know the Dolphins are going to want to keep the game close or potentially just want to win this game against the Colts to be at 500. And so that when Tua comes back, they're still in the AFC race. So give me the Dolphins plus three and a half. If Anthony Richardson is playing, don't have much faith with him as a quarterback. I know he has that dual threat ability, but I like the Dolphins to come in from the bye, well rested, find a way to get a W. But I like the spread. I give me the plus three and a half Miami Dolphins. Green Bay Packers versus the Houston Texans. The Packers defeated the Arizona Cardinals at home against Lambeau, in which they pretty much embarrassed the Arizona Cardinals. Meanwhile, the Texans defeated the Patriots by about 20 points. The Texans' defense is starting to get decimated by injuries. They're probably going to play without their starting defensive tackle, without their linebacker, without their cornerback, without their safety, and Nico Collins is on the IR. This Texans team is starting to get hurt with the injury bug. Meanwhile, the Packers are just the more healthier team. They're at Lambeau. The beginning of the week on my money line edition for predictions, I did like the Texans upset here. But now that the injury report is coming out, don't have much faith in this Texans team right now, especially now that the Packers switch kickers. Neverson has been released. They're bringing in Brandon McManus. Maybe I feel a bit more comfortable with the kicking situation, but I like the Packers minus three here. Don't I don't have much faith in this Texans team right now based on how injured this team is. The Packers are at home, blow for blow game, but I like Jordan Love to take care of business at home and defeat the Houston Texans. Give me the Packers minus three. Cincinnati Bengals versus the Cleveland Browns. The the Bengals defeated the Giants on primetime. Meanwhile, the Browns lose to the Philadelphia Eagles. The Browns, they keep things interesting with the Eagles, but this team just straight sucks. I'm so happy that they traded Amari Cooper. Now this offense is stagnant times two. I don't expect them to score a lot of points, even how how bit shredded this Bengals defense can be. But I like the Bengals to keep their winning streak, keep it going for the season. I feel comfortable with the minus five and a half, five and a half with the Bengals. I understand that Joe Pearl has yet to win a road game at Cleveland, but I think the winning the winning streak here continues. Don't have faith in this Browns team. I like the Bengals at minus five and a half spread. Tennessee Titans versus the Buffalo Bills. The Titans lose to the Colts. Meanwhile, the Bills defeated the New York Jets on primetime. The Bills are finally coming back home after a three road game stretch. Um, don't have much much faith in this Titans team as well. Their defense is quite stout, but as long as Will Levis is there at quarterback, no faith in this team. Now that the Bills got Amari Cooper, I expect this offense to be more explosive and take care of this Titans team. With that being said, don't feel too comfortable with this line being this high because I can see the Titans defense, sorry, Titans defense stopping certain drives for the Bills. I'm going to do a teaser parlay. I'm going to alternate the spread and parlay it with another team by alternating the spread. So give me the teaser parlay, minus five and a half bills and minus four commanders. I'm going to do a teaser parlay. Depending on what sports book you have, that can give you a odds of plus 120. Tease down the bills line a little bit. I feel comfortable choosing them with under a field goal. So give me the teaser parlay, minus five and a half bills, combine it with the commanders, minus four. Seahawks versus the Atlanta Falcons. The Seahawks are now coming into this game off their mini buy now that they played three games in 10 days, and the Falcons are remaining hot on their nice winning streak. The Falcons come back home to Atlanta. Their past few games in Atlanta, the games have been coming down to a wire where if you are a better that's been betting on the Falcons, you're probably having anxiety attacks based on how they played at home. But the Seahawks are now rested after a brutal three-game stretch. They're going to Atlanta. I like the Seahawks at plus three. I think this would be a close game. The past three home games at Atlanta have been down to one possession games. I do like the high-scoring game in this game. I like the Seahawks at plus three. So I do think the Falcons could probably win outright. I like the Seahawks to keep it close. Give me the Seahawks plus three. Commanders versus the Carolina Panthers. The Commanders lose to the Baltimore Ravens and the Panthers lose to the Atlanta Falcons. I do like the Commanders to win this game with ease. But like I said, with the Buffalo Bills game, don't feel comfortable with the line because I can see Andy Dalton just throwing all over the place in this game and with a potential backdoor. So I'm going to tease it down. Like I said, teaser parlay minus four Commanders combining with a minus five and a half Bills. I feel comfortable getting that line down to minus four and combining it with the Bills plus 120 odds. The Commanders and Bills are my teaser parlay for this weekend. 
Los Angeles Rams versus the Las Vegas Raiders. The Rams are coming off their bye. Meanwhile, the Raiders lost to the Steelers and then traded Devontae Adams to the New York Jets. Zero confidence in this Raiders team. I don't think that they're done selling players on their team. Hopefully, they probably sell a couple more before the deadline and kind of just start fresh probably for next year. Um, and then the Rams are coming off a bye. I have a lot of faith in this Rams team than I do with the Raiders team. I have faith in Stafford and Kyron Williams moving the ball than I do with the Raiders now that um, Adams is gone. So give me the Los Angeles Rams minus seven. I feel comfortable and I kind of like this at least touchdown spread right here. Give me the Rams minus seven. I don't think that the Rams will continue to lose um, in during with this game. So I like the Rams minus seven spread. Chiefs versus the 49ers. The Chiefs are coming off their bye, and the 49ers defeated the Seattle Seahawks. This game is in San Fran, Super Bowl matchup. I expect both teams to make this game go down to the wire. Um, the Chiefs know that CMC is not playing, so I do expect them to do their best to you know, be heavy on the pass defense to stop Brock Purdy because Brock Purdy is looking like a top five quarterback this season. Meanwhile, the Chiefs just lack playmakers on offense, so I don't think this will be a high-scoring game. I think this game will be very close. Um, but with that being said, the under, I can't go against the undefeated Chiefs right now. I'm going to take them at the underdog spread. I like the one and a half. I like a 23-24 kind of game either or. But I like the Chiefs at plus one and a half. Keep it close. Interesting potential win outright in San Fran. Give me the Chiefs plus one and a half. New York Jets versus the Pittsburgh Steelers. The Jets lose to the Bills on primetime and the Steelers defeated the Raiders. This is Russell Wilson's first game with the Pittsburgh Steelers. They're expecting Probably Wilson to play better than Justin Fields, even though I think that Justin Fields has played quite well now that the Steelers are 4-2, and two, so why make the quarterback change now? And then the New York Jets did obtain Devontae Adams in a trade, which is a huge boost to this offense. Um, this game is on prime time. The Jets don't have the best prime time record, but with the acquisition of Devontae Adams, I trust this team to score points than I do with the Steelers right now. So give me the Jets minus one and a half. Don't feel comfortable when you're betting on New York teams, but give me the Jets minus one and a half. I like uh, the acquisition of Devontae Adams to help this offense, give it a boost, and win on primetime in Pittsburgh. Jets minus one and a half. Baltimore Ravens versus the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Ravens defeated the Commanders, and the Buccaneers embarrassed the Saints. The Bucs did drop a 41-piece on the Saints, but I think that was just due to a rookie quarterback in Spencer Rattler. He did not look good on Thursday night, um, but... Can't put too much stock in this Buccaneers team. They are pretty well when it comes to underdog spreads, and they're coming back home. But as long as Lamar Jackson is playing, he feasts on NFC teams. And I like this game to be – I like the Ravens to win this game by probably at least four points or no, or more. I like Lamar Jackson to defeat the Buccaneers outright, and I like the spread of minus three and a half with the Rams. I think the Rams can take care of business in Tampa Bay, continue their winning streak. So give me the Ravens. Minus three and a half to defeat the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Meanwhile, we had the Los Angeles Chargers versus the Arizona Cardinals. The Chargers defeated the Broncos. Meanwhile, the Cardinals got embarrassed at Lambeau Field. Marvin Harrison Jr. may not play in this game, and that's just a lack of weapon for this Cardinals offense. Meanwhile, this Cardinals defense just just got shredded by the Packers team at Lambeau Field. I trust the Chargers team more. Great coaching staff. They rely on the run game a lot, and that will probably help open up the pass game for Justin Herbert to shred this um, Cardinals pass defense. So give me the Chargers minus two. I feel comfortable with this minus two spread, and I think that they can probably make this a low-scoring game. I think the Cardinals will have a hard time scoring points. Give me the Chargers minus two. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed the content, please give the video a thumbs up and comment below on your week seven picks. Thank you so much and catch you guys next week.